Now let's look at using MATLAB to solve problems from trigonometry. Trigonometry is all about the unit circle. If I take a circle on the x-y axis with a radius of 1, and take a point on the circle and spin it around, say right here, the x-axis maps out cosine of q as I go from 0 to 360 degrees. The y-axis is sine of q, sine of the angle. The tangent is, so we draw the tangent line at 1, the angle going up where it intersects the tangent line or intersects the axis at 1 is the tangent of q. In MATLAB you can do that. Suppose the angle goes from 0 take a thousand points, and angles in MATLAB are actually in radians. So pretty much rule of thumb in electrical engineering, anything English is a natural, the natural unit will be radians. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi, radians. If x is cosine of q, y is sine of q, plot x versus y, you get the unit circle. That's the whole idea behind trigonometry, going around the unit circle. The tangent It's not going to like that. Well, try again. If I take angles going from minus 1 radian to plus 1 radian, that's about minus 57 degrees to plus 57 degrees. Take the tangent at that angle, and now let's plot 1 and tangent. You see the tangent line over here This is the tangent of the angle. Hence the name tangent. Now some of the neat things you can do is do some animation. Suppose I plot cosine versus sine and add a small angle here and watch what happens. If I write this function, angle goes from 0 to 2 pi, x is cosine, y is sine, and then add to y just a small number and keep on changing that number, that's like time. What this looks like is the following. Pasting in MATLAB. What that pause does is it draws the function, waits 10 milliseconds, then repeats. As it goes, you wind up with what looks like a piece of animation, a circle spinning around. Kind of one way to do animation in MATLAB. Okay, MATLAB also has a thing called complex numbers. If I want to express something in terms of x and y, I need to keep track of two variables. One way around that is to have a thing called complex numbers. j is the squared minus 1. So we want to keep track of uh, two variables, say the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. I could do this. The x-coordinate is 2, the y-coordinate is 3, and I've got bad notation here. I should use like a point P. Um, suppose I want to have like a fire cannonball, and it's going to travel through the air and then land somewhere. I need to know the position. See, it's at point 0.23, x is 2, y is 3. It's got a velocity. Suppose the velocity is 1 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. If I know the position and velocity, I can say, where is going to be 0.01 second in the future? And that would be the current position, or new position, is the old position, plus velocity times time. In point 0.1 second, there's the new spot. We keep on repeating. I see the point moving. If I draw it on the plot over there, it's 
put a circle at that point. You can see the point moving. Put that in a loop, and it looks like the ball is being fired across the sky. So I'd like to create a function where I launch a cannonball from the origin, 0, 0, launch it at a certain velocity and a certain angle, have it come down and see where it lands. Uh, to do that, we need a function. One of the powers of MATLAB is you can create your own function. So I suppose I want to have what is the square of x. Square currently is not a function of MATLAB. I could create it, however, by saying file new function. It'll tell me here's the format of it. This is the output of the function that I return. This is the name of the function. I know it is case sensitive. I'm going to pass to it x and return y. Part down here, if I type in the word help, this will tell me what goes on over here, what it shows up when I do the help function. Uh, percent is just a comment statement, doesn't affect the function. If I now do over here, this is what the function is. I'm going to calculate y is equal to x squared and return that. If I now do save, now square is, again, save, square is now a function of MATLAB. So if I type what's the square of 3, it tells me, yep, the answer is 9 along with a warning that I was inconsistent with the capital capitalizations. So let's do the same thing over here with firing a tennis ball. That's the function shoot in Bison Academy. So if we go over here, we can first start with the function, get it debugged to, for it to work, and then make a function out of it where I pass the angle, speed, and where my target is, what I want to shoot at, have it launch a tennis ball and return how much I missed. Initially, I'll start with it being hard-coded. I'm going to launch it 45 degrees, and anything English is a natural, so it's 45 converted to radians. My initial speed is 30 meters per second, and my target is at 90 meters. Initially, I'm going to start at the origin, 0, 0, and the velocity is based upon the angle. Cosine of the angle is the x velocity, sine of angle is the y velocity, j meaning y-axis, scaled by speed. If I go every point of one second, and this is the wind drag, it's related to velocity cubed. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second down in the y direction, plus the wind drag. That's the nice thing about complex numbers. Wind drag is based upon velocity, and so whatever direction the velocity is, it opposes it. The velocity is the integration of acceleration. Position is the integration of velocity. Plot those on the screen, and this is what it looks like. Copy. Paste. Here I'm launching the tennis ball. It's going up in the air. And eventually it'll come down. Okay, repeating. There it goes, gets launched, comes down, and I missed. Let's put that in a function. Let's do file new function. This is how much I missed. Error is shoot. and take that previous function, type it into here. Uh, the angle, speed, I will be passing to it. So I'll take these out. If I want to input the angle in degrees, 
This will convert degrees to radians. Uh, speed I don't need anymore because I'm going to input that. Target I don't need anymore. I'm going to input that. Now it'll sit there and run through. The error that's E. Is where it, point, where it lines it at. The target, 90 meters initially, minus the x portion of the ball when it hits the ground. So I'm going to save that as shoot.m. I can now call that. So the error is shoot. I'm going to start out at 45 degrees. 30 meters per second, and my target's at 90. I launch it, comes down, hits the ground. A common problem in electrical engineering is solving function equals zero. What I want to do is find out how do I shoot the cannonball to hit the target, make the air equal to zero. Well, what I could do is say, let's now try 35 meters per second. It's going to go up, come down, and land. So here I have 30 produce 12, 35 produce minus 7. I can sit there and figure out where the next guess should be using interpolation. If I draw a line between those two points, uh, 30 produce an error of 12, 35 produce an error of minus 7, I get this line. The zero crossing right here would be my next guess. That would be 33.2. I can also calculate that. My next guess would be the previous guess. Uh, the slope would be my first guess, 30, plus the slope. Uh, change in y over change of x. x changed by 5, y changed by that much. That's the sens sensitivity. That was the initial error. 12.19, bring it down to zero. My next guess should be 33.1662. So if I try that, 33.1662, and all by 0.33. Keep iterating, and I can get closer to zero. That's one way to solve function equals zero. I'm trying to find out what the velocity should be to make the error zero. Repeating again. Pretty close to zero.